By the way, if you hear some knocking on the doors and the walls, it's because we're in Harlem and we're being gentrified by the second. I got my master's in painting at the Art Institute of Chicago. However, while I was in that program, I didn't paint a single painting. Um, I started painting and drawing when I was probably 10 or 11, and by the time I was 14, I was showing in Los Angeles at you know various small high school shows and so on. But I was taking art and painting very seriously at that point. And not until I got to college had I really been exposed to sculpture. I started with metal. In Japan, I did start doing a lot of found object work, which, when I got back to the States, really started as the beginning of my serious exploration into sculpture. This is a sculpture that I made that has become that becomes part of a video. All my videos usually are focused around objects or artworks of mine. This is made from melted down hip hop jewelry and then formed into the singing bowl. I found my experience in Japan. I was living there in the mid '90s. And you but, speak Japanese. And I speak Japanese, yes. But uh, while I was there, I. I started studying Buddhism and one of the aspects is the idea of the middle way. And the middle way is to find a middle path, not going to the extremes on one side or the other. And thinking about being a minority in the US, and if I took everything that happened to me on a daily basis in either extreme, I'd be a wreck. So to navigate the US, I always found a middle way. This is a video still from the actual video which was a bell ceremony that I did outside of Tokyo at a Zen temple. So it was myself and 16 other um, volunteers, including the head monk of the temple. I thought hip hop was dead when I did this in 2004, but my stronger feelings of that are already passed, so I don't even know what hip hop is right now. I know what I hear on the radio, but that's not really hip hop. Performer 07, I created um, a theater piece called The Something Sweet. And my inspiration was actually partly because of the death of hip hop and also the similarity between present day hip hop radio music and the minstrel show from uh, and vaudeville from the turn of the uh, 20th century in uh, American musical theater. Leave a corpse in the burning. Drum machine right here, and my keyboard right here, and my MIDI board right here. So, um, for me, taking some of that, uh, the music, and incorporating it with video and performance was second nature. It's not a costume. It's a, it's more of a sculpture. In it's a, a form sculpture, of coat. but it also has been used as a costume before as well. The first one I made was shown at the Princeton University Museum. The idea was that these are used in the hood, and the ghetto bird is actually a nickname for helicopter. So when the ghetto bird comes around black neighborhoods, if people put on a ghetto bird tunic and they move a certain way in the street, they can camouflage and the ghetto bird won't see them. Uh, that was the first one I made and it was put on display in the African section along with other ritual objects. I recently completed this at Grand Arts in Kansas City. Uh, this was commissioned by them and what it is is, as you see, a tree with a piano growing right out of it. And this piano has been retrofitted fitted into a player piano and I've programmed it to play my own version of 
the famous Billie Holiday song, Strange Fruit. When I started to take on uh, the mandala motif for myself, I started to construct these large dance floors. This is one that was at PS1, for instance, and it's made out of hand-cut um, rubber tiles that are then tiled down to create this large mandala. And then I would invite great dancers to come perform. And so what you're seeing right here is an overhead view of one of the dance floors with a performer spinning on it. I was first being trained as an artist, I was told that you had to decide what your medium was. So I was told that if I was a painter, that's all I was supposed to be. The minute that you start to label things, that's when you start to control and sometimes limit the possibilities. So rather than be considered a painter or a sculptor or an installation artist, I'd rather leave all options open and consider myself a multimedia artist. Yeah.